Welcome to Thinking It Over, Better Impressions with Yiska. As the title says, Yiska, that's me, and this show conceptually is to record my better impressions and observations and also uh, provide better feedback to the game, which every active beta user should do. I am currently in the beta, I'm playing a lot right now, and yeah, it's, it, it, I think it's quite important to give back to the community. For that reason, I will also have something written up to follow my train of thought, uh, if you don't want to watch the entire video. Um, for this video, it will probably be a mind map. Don't know how well that will turn out. Maybe I will go to bullet points or possibly even an article in the future. Um, the second objective of this video series is to hone my rhetorical skills. So if you have feedback to that, Post it in the respective comment section. I um, very much read those and um, any help is appreciated. So today's topic is mercy. Um, maybe let's talk about first how she plays in public games because how the game currently functions even in higher MMR is unless you are with friends, nobody's really talking. So what this uh, does is it makes her quite unfun to play. Um, that is because she has no offensive uh, capability or barely any uh, offensive capabilities. Her secondary weapon is quite weak. You have no business contesting pretty much any class. Um, also because of a health pool, relatively uh, low health, health pool. And that is... Um, why she can be a little bit annoying to play in pub games because um, when nobody's communicating, the flanker obviously has a much easier time to get to you and that is um, why you will often find yourself dying even though there is technically an UI implementation for the person you're healing or damage boosting so they see uh, your life bar but given the time to kill in Overwatch most of the time it will be hard for them to save you um, in a competitive setting, she has been proven to be a must pick. So she's currently uh, one of the two healers mostly played. I guess you could make an argument for Symmetra being played on the first point on, uh, of defense. Um, but other than that, currently it's mostly Mercy and Lucio, Lucio. And that is because Mercy has a great ultimate. Probably the strongest in the game. Um, and it basically functions as a reset for your team fight, but then because both teams have one, it f um, becomes a strategical tool where you either want to res more people than the opponent, or get a better timing, or um, be l the last to resurrect, so you have more people uh, alive at a uh, more opportune moment. Um, in general, I guess people have an issue with her being uh, a must pick. And I will get into why that isn't necessarily a problem. Maybe the must pick part, but not her power levels. So, how does this build argument build up? Um, let's first say what is bullshit about her. So, currently, when she is in spawn and you just died and you failed to actually resurrect your team, while you were still alive and in combat, there are map positions where your spawn is close enough to uh, resurrect them out of spawn and no counterplay is available to the opponent. And while I, you can argue that the damage is already done when Mercy has built an ultimate, that's a pretty weak point and I ultimately think um, there has to be some kind of mechanic that uh, prevents out of spawn resing and there's lots of solutions to this you could potentially think about um, her losing 10% of her ultimate charge when she dies you could think about a smaller radius around that that would obviously have other gameplay um, implications which I don't necessarily mind which certainly increase the skill cap of uh, people's positioning and um, I guess you could also uh, zone the respawn zone as a no u ultimates used zone, but then she just steps out and it's not much of a uh, 
problem solving um, move there. So she also forms one of the two or, or one the one the best combo of two champions right now which is her and Farah. so the synergy is obvious they're both uh, technically airborne characters so uh, mercy can always boost to her and then um, basically stay in the air for an infinite amount of time that makes it hard for her to be hit at some locations which I don't necessarily mind. I think people with time will find out how there's, uh, there's counterplay. Um, what I do mind, though, is the way this combo is currently played, in the sense that she's very hard to kill for uh, snipers such as Widowmaker, and it's very easy to luck out on rockets with a damage boost, hitting a headshot that you... I guess there's some skill in pre-firing, but it does get very random when you instantly give a squishy class and therefore initiate a push and um, games can be won based on that. So is that a Mercy issue? I'm actually not quite sure. It, it sounds more like a Farah issue and you would have to look at the damage numbers. Um, maybe it's just the way how fishing will work in the, uh, in the future. Maybe it's about getting picks. If they have to be so lucky, I don't know if I'm like that, but in terms of power levels for Mercy, I don't think that's an issue of her, and rather you should look at the synergy, how these characters play, and it's probably more on the part of Farah. Um, this combo also makes it counterintuitive in a way, um, because at a higher level, you probably don't want to shoot everything uh, that gets into your sight. Um, you want to pick your targets wisely, and you want to have, at certain points in the game, you want to think about, okay, how strong is my ultimate against the person I'm shooting? I'm building his ultimate by shooting him. Can I really kill him? Because if I kill him, it's always worth it, basically. Like, it, that is, um, if you can get the kill, you probably made the right decision. Now, if he survives, then he gets back, gets healed up by their own mercy, and you build. They build more uh, old percentages overall than you did while dealing damage. Now, with Mercy and Farah, this isn't really true because of how success, uh, powerful these pickoffs are. So. Top teams right now would still go for the random sprays, even though sometimes people can shower in them, especially tanks, to load up their ultimate. Um, because of how the uh, the thing functions, 120 damage, it's very easy to be picked off then as a squishy class. Um, it's probably right now um, another issue with this combo that it provides or really doesn't allow for it as much strategical depth or rather decisions making decision making of every single player in the game how he trades all percentages and if you're a confident player obviously always go for the kill but uh, if you want to be smart about it then maybe not build up their ultimates for them um so why do i think mercy and the current version she's in is actually quite healthy for the game for this, I would like to use the metaphor of um, the Golden Snitch from the game of uh, Quidditch from the Harry Potter universe. Quidditch, for those who don't know, is basically soccer with more elements, so more bo balls who all count different values. Um, basically, it's about scoring goals, and then there's the added mechanic of the Golden Snitch. And the Golden Snitch is a... Uh, ironically, um, quite similar looking uh, object to Mercy, so they both have wings, they're both golden, and um, the way it functions is basically when the Quidditch, uh, when the Snitch is caught, it adds 150 points, so 15 times the value of um, the normal ball of a goal, and it immediately stops the game. In a similar sense, if you get Mercy, 
then it's immediately game over for that push, probably. Unless you really, really outplay the opponent hard or get their mercy at the same time, your push is probably not going to succeed. And I personally don't think that's much of a problem. Because um, what it does is it creates these roles, such as um, the Mercy being the Golden Snitch, and then in the, in the game of Quidditch, there's the Seeker looking for the Golden Snitch. And in our game, that's called a Flanker, right? So the flanker tries to get into the back line and pick up, pick off the most valuable targets. He's probably not going for a tank that takes too long, but he wants to have the most impact on the fight. And where does he have the most impact? Killing Mercy. So obviously her power level is very high, and that's illustrated by that. But having a surviving Mercy isn't really only on the Mercy, but it's an, a team effort, and it's really helps team uh, play in that sense, that it's really a team effort to keep her alive. Obviously it's about um, positioning it too, but um, protecting her unlocks new potential and she can really facilitate your team and um, make it much stronger in that sense. So, um, the Seeker currently in the game probably are Tracer and Genji. So they're very mobile characters, they can flank quite well, they can get in and finish the job quite quickly, If also especially if they have the ultimates. In the case of uh, Tracer it's even more apparent. When you can stick the bomb onto the Mercy, now you destroyed the push or you destroyed the defense or really weakened it. Even if you die, you traded one for one but basically you trade it one for four maybe if uh, Mercy was to get a res of three people, which isn't as unusual. So it really focuses the gameplay in a sense. So from a gameplay point of view, you protect your Mercy and she makes it so your team gets much stronger. And I think ultimately that is that should be supports. The less offensive ability a support has, the more impact he needs to have on the team and if it's a team objective based game then you support each other and if the support supports uh, the the tanks the um, flankers but then they have to support her back in guarding her and I think it um, really creates an interesting gameplay that um, doesn't necessarily set the met meta too much because you could, could possibly conceive of a bulldoze comb that just breaks the front line, even goes through reses. And that is one thing that also has to be said. Currently, the strength of the ultimate is probably a little bit exaggerated. As people uh, get better, um, the skill floor of her is obviously quite low from a mechanical point of view. So the current plays won't be improved much from a mechanical s standpoint, maybe from a positioning uh, perspective. But um, the thing is, people aren't very good at setting up onto resurrecting opponents yet. So, technically, it isn't impossible to um, set up on, for instance, a resurrecting character as a Junkrat or as a Reinhardt, who can, if you are very good at timing those, you can immediately charge them off and kill them instantly again. So, people aren't very good at this at, the, um, at this point, and the... Um, impact of the ults will relatively go down over time. The next thing to consider also is that people will get worse, uh, better at not feeding the mercy. So currently I feel like her uh, strength is a little bit exaggerated, but um, I think it will get better over time, which is also a reason I pledge to not change too much about her. Um, from a pers uh, spectator point of view, which we also have to consider if we want this to be an esports, we have to think what creates narratives within gameplay and what creates narratives outside of gameplay. So I think Mel uh, um, Mercy is also very um, well healthy for um, this thing too, because if you think about it, what she does is you have an 
objective on your UI that if their mercy dies first and the other one survives, you know now they have a power play. So it currently Overwatch is very hard to watch at times. But if you have these objectives, the, these clear failures of a team to protect their mercy, now you know why a team fight w went south. And I, some people would say, okay, that is because Mercy is too strong right now. No, I think in the future you will see the narrative she can create is insanely va valuable in order to communicate this game. And ideally, she should be the benchmark where every other support is. And to an extent, the same concepts of support, when a support dies, it's mostly worse than any other character dying. Because if you think about it, if Lucio can't get it out, his ultimate off, now he seems much weaker. The the combat ultimates, such as Farah or McCree, they A, very hard to apply sometimes, and they don't, most of the time, win teamfights by themselves. So, if your Farah is picked off, there's still a lot of firepower in your team to possibly win the teamfight. This... I think it's quite valuable to have a role within the meta, this support, and even two characters at one time, maybe three, that facilitates the strengths of a team. And if they get picked off, the team should be punished for it. And I really like the concept of amplifying the strengths of your team and it, what it does for uh, the spectator experience. So you have a clear objective within those team fights um, to look out for not only the obvious uh, objective of the payload and the point, but also is the Mercy dead, is the Lucio dead. So ideally we should be getting those supports onto this level. Now, just like in Quidditch, if you think about it, the star players are always the seekers. And I th I personally think in order for this game to have a big fan base, this also needs to be true for um, for Overwatch. So even though Mercy might be the most valuable target to prote protect, the skill lies within those who kill her. So currently the classes Tracer and Genji are um, those who should be flanking. You could make an argument about D.Va. Um, Obviously, every character technically could flank, but because of their movement skills for Tracer and Genji, they just offer themselves to that. And I think that's also very good for the game, because what it does is then you have the highest skill cap characters, Genji and Tracer, in these star player positions that you can clearly see, okay, this person gets Mercy reliably, or gets him in these clutch positions. He wins the fight for his teammates and ca can ca really carry the team by killing the second objective. And from my understanding of esports, it can't only be about the team. It has to be about um, certain star players. And if you... For the better users, if you look inside yourself and decide what the most impressive plays are, it will most of the time be those characters because they're very me mechanically demanding, also need quite a bit of uh, mechanical strength, uh, strategical depth, and um, having those as very impactful characters where people can clearly be better than others is very important. And that is facilitated through the strengths of Mercy. So, in conclusion, let's round this up. Um, you, I think Mercy currently is the benchmark of um, support play. Every support character, depending on their offensive output, should be in the region, and then the more offensively viable they are, the weaker their support features should be. And I think that is kind of the case. I'd love to see some buffs to... Uh, Symmetra and um, <coughs> uh, Zenyatta in that sense. I would have to see more tournaments where they actually get play. Currently, it doesn't look like it will be, but that isn't a problem, in my opinion, of Mercy and Lucio being too strong, but rather those others being very uh, limited to the situations where you can use them from. So, um, 
I hope we don't overreact with nerfs to Mercy because I think actually think she's in a quite healthy place. We, um, obviously, we mentioned the problems of spawn raising and uh, the Farah uh, Mercy combo. Maybe we need to revisit those and get to them, but I don't think there's conceptually anything wrong with how Mercy plays right now. Another um, interesting topic, obviously, is to entertain the thought that she is just the um, position of the shot caller. So, um, sorry, that's not really part of the conclusion, but le let's uh, still keep going. That... Um, the shot caller is someone from another team game that basically makes the strategical decisions on the fly or sometimes based on set uh, practice uh, strategies and having one role not having this high of a mechanical demand is probably quite healthy and uh, right now if you think about teams such as CSGO or um, League of Legends, there, ideally, you don't want your uh, shot callers to be on these mechanically demanding positions so they have the capacity to shot call whilst um, still being effective in the game. So I think Mercy offers herself to that. As I said, don't have much of an issue with Mercy, um, how she plays right now. Other supports should probably be buffed to the point, fix the couple of issues I mentioned. And um, in this sense, I would like to leave you with basically your new mantra, which you should be employing whenever you play right now, also in pub games. So in that sense, be the seeker, snitches get stitches. Thank you for watching.